Hey guys, VTech here, Blueberry Hill, December 30th. So prepping for the last few days, I went and got some steel for the stairs that are going in the hallway up to the second floor, the game room. And we decided to do a kind of an industrial contemporary look. It's going to be uh, two 8-inch C-channels, uh, overkill size, uh, just basically mainly for the look. Um, and then uh, 5 16 inch metal bracket supports for the actual wooden treads. The treads are going to be uh, one and a half inch thick and some hardwood, um, stained natural. Um, anyway, the stairs should look nice and uh, crisp, clean lines. Um, again, kind of a contemporary modern look and uh, we'll see where we go. So since the, uh, the C channels are very light, we, uh, Pop and I, I didn't turn the video on until this, this stage, but we propped it up with a couple of come-alongs. They still have the hooks in the containers that allowed us to do this. Come-alongs co go across the container and we basically just uh, hefted it in place. Um, you'll, you'll see it a little better in a second uh, C-channel uh, with, with Angie's help. Anyway, we're, Pop's kind of holding it so it doesn't slide out at all. There was really no chance of that anyway. It's pretty heavy and it's sitting flat on the ground. Um, so you see us kind of joshing it in place. It's roughly six inches from the center of the stairway each C channel left to right uh, so we'll have two big C channels running up and down the center of the stairway pretty much separated by uh, 12 inches and uh, then the supports will hold metal brackets that will eventually have the treads on them so here we are trying to <laughs> finagle our way to uh, making sure everything's nice and tight and uh, straight so once we measured up where the uh, C channel goes we're using a uh, concrete drill bit to uh, make a couple of holes for three eight inch bolts um, two of them we welded a, uh, a spot welded plates on the bottom of the c-channel so it's flat on the ground there's a couple of holes I didn't show you that part and now we're trying to make the holes um, for the, for the uh, anchors themselves um, I didn't have really good bits so I had to do this a couple times to get the hole welded out and then we had fun trying to get the anchors in place but we managed not a big deal so here's day two, uh, with Angie's help we're going to get this second C-channel up. You can see the come alongs against the uh, the wall, they're strapped so that I can uh, lift the front part of the C-channel up into them like a cradle and then uh, Angie will come and uh, help me and we'll just kind of guide it into place. Uh, second time's a charm, learned from the first one, this went, we were pretty much done 5-10 minutes uh, trying to get this in place, pretty easy. The, the drywall dolly actually made it quite easy to move it. Obviously, so you don't drag it on the concrete. I don't want to leave gashes or whatever. And here we go. We just uh, play with the come-alongs. I had two of them, so I could cinch one up, put it in place, move it, and then get the other one in place. So here you see uh, myself and Angie. We're bundled up. It was pretty cold the last few days in, in the 40s. Um, so here we're doing the uh, the come-alongs. We're going to cinch it up. I'm going to just grab it, pull it up, lock it in place, move it up, lock it in place, etc. And then uh, just so we get it in the position. I get it high enough and then I kind of move it towards the uh, support on the uh, second floor and then we lock it down and uh, weld it up. So once we got it uh, kind of locked in place we're uh, making sure that uh, it's kind of stable, stays in the spot. You see me moving it over and uh, I believe it was a 12 inch gap between the C channels. So we're measuring it up making sure it's uh, parallel and uh, even and uh, now we're going to drill holes for the uh, anchors. We kind of moved the uh, C-channel over, not a big deal, and she's using her foot to hold it there. Whiskey's trying to help, I guess. <laughs> um, once we cut the holes, I had to go get a drill bit uh, undersized, so I, I should have bought new drill bits, I didn't, uh, so live and learn. I had to get a smaller size and then uh, get back to the 3 8 one. And uh, no problem there, once we did that, we got the holes done, we moved the C-channel back in place, cinched it up, anchored it, and off we went. So we're uh, blowing the holes out with air, compressed air for a portable uh, work compressor. And uh, then we move the uh, the C-channel over. I'll put a measuring tape down just so we don't have to keep measuring as we're doing it. And then uh, we skid it over, put anchors in, and we're good to go. Pretty easy peasy. This one went uh, a lot easier than the one the day before. Just because, uh, you know, practice makes perfect and doing it the second time is a lot easier. But pretty good. And then uh, I just welded her up on the second floor and we're done. So to clean things up, I just cut the excess of the, the all thread off on the anchors, make it nice and flat, and uh, hopefully makes it a little bit neater. So just a little bit of tidying up. So since the uh, C channels are up, they're welded up, ready to go. 
we're doing a little bit of production run on the, the support brackets, little triangles to hold the steel plate uh, for the treads uh, to the C-channels. Just needed 30 of these, 15 for each side. The C-channels point to the outside of the stairway on both sides. So they're the same, just pointing a different direction. And uh, I'm using a, a generic cutoff wheel. It's a six inch on a, a, a Dewalt grinder. Uh, it's a very thin blade um, cutoff wheel. Does a really nice job on cutting this stuff. I have a uh, dry cut saw, which would have been perfect, except it's hard to clamp this, this kind of stuff in there just because of the odd, uh, odd shape of the C-channel. Um, and then turning it for the angles would have been a bit of a pain. So chose this method, it worked pretty good. And then you'll see me doing a fine fine touch up on it with my big uh, uh, Dewalt seven inch grinder uh, that does that eats metal and uh, works really well. So Pop and Angie were helping me do the, uh, the plate steel. I was cutting it again with the cutoff wheel and they were drilling the holes um, which will receive the bolts to hold the, uh, the treads on once we have uh, the treads in place. Um, anyway, that was a production run. Here you see me, I'm playing with the camera a little bit. <laughs> I have it sitting on top of the plate. I'm cutting, see the vibration taking it off. But uh, I'm doing those while they're cutting the holes and uh, close up shop. Me uh, measuring it, just it's a two foot plate, five, six inches thick, six inch wide. Um, should be plenty strong for pretty much anything that goes up and down the stairs. So we should be good to go. Yeah, nothing fancy here. I'm just doing a cleanup. We cut the holes. We actually uh, knock them down a little bit, and then uh, of course make the edges nice and smooth. The cutoff wheel does a pretty good job. It leaves a little bit of uh, you know lines in there, so we just grind those off. And here's another view of uh, Pop and Angie doing the uh, the holes. We're using a uni bit. Love those things. Uh, they we didn't even kill one of them for 15 of the treads times four holes a piece. So pretty good work. They did a good job. And uh, we got the thing done pretty quickly, and then it was my turn to start welding up all the stuff um, on the uh, on the stairs. So I'm starting to weld up the uh, the metal brackets. Um, I put the triangles on. I use uh, a magnet to hold them in place, measure it off, and I start at the top just so I can make the top step flush with the, uh, the second floor. Uh, I didn't want to have an issue with having a small defect at the very top. If I didn't measure properly on the, uh, the rises. So I started at the top, worked my way down, and uh, I actually liked that because it made it easier the closer I got to the ground. So yay. But anyway, measuring off the seven and a half inch rise. Um, so once I started with the first one, I basically seven and a half inch uh, rise off the metal bracket right there. Um, used a magnet to position the triangulated supports and just walked my way down for 15 steps. So practice makes perfect. I started the uh, you know, once you start a few of these, then the next next ones are easier. So I'm using a right angle right there to offset the, uh, the supports. I make sure it's still square with the step and the rise is proper. Uh, then I use, of course, the level to make sure I'm still still on par. And all that seems to do pretty good. So the stairs the stair looks pretty good to me. Um, I've had people walk up and down it after I finish, and they they like you. So thumbs up. Once the measurements uh, were done, I basically tacked the uh, the triangulated supports in place. Um, then I uh, I do a seam weld on the outside, which is the, the parts that's visible, and on the inside I do a, a three three inch long uh, welding runs. And then the metal plate will get a nice solid run all the way around. I get all 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 the visuals uh, that you'll see are of the solid welds, just to make it look pretty neat. At least I think it does. So I'll just show you a little. Uh, more close-up work on the uh, how I was doing everything. So I use the square to measure up the rise, make sure it's in the right spot. I even put the the plate, uh, spare piece of plate on there to make sure the rise was correct. Um, and then I tack things in. Then I switch to the other side and do the same thing there. Um, I always keep checking for level and all that stuff, just making sure nothing's off an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch because it'll walk on you if you if you don't let it. Um, I did have more magnets somewhere to support stuff, but unfortunately I only found this one. So it made the job a little bit uh, less fun. Oh, another another one or two of those things would have been great. In any case, uh, keep checking. There are my inspectors coming in, trying to see what's going on. Um, but anyway, just weld it up, make it good. So 
So I was always measuring the uh, the tread, you know, left to right, to make sure it was uh, in place. And then I, uh, every time you move the, the metal plate, it's heavy, so it's kind of hard to move smoothly. So I kept checking, checking and checking and more checking. <laughs> and then I finally welded up. So you'll see that. Here you go. Two hands, or another pair of hands on this would have been a lot, lot quicker, but it worked out pretty good. And then final weld up. Basically, just go around, making sure it's nice and uh, nice and secure. Again, all the visual wells are going to be uh, continuous, and then the ones on the underneath and C channel, just three stitches of that. But uh, I did have to make, as you see me, these are the last few steps I did. I did have to cut four new brackets. Uh, I believe they were the ones against the wall because uh, they sort of walk it on me a little bit, so they were like an eighth of an inch uh, angled off. So I made a, uh, I paired these guys up, left, left and right uh, brackets made four new ones and uh, here I am continuing the process and I finish within probably about an hour here. So anyway, uh, rinse and repeat. It was fun. I actually enjoy this kind of stuff so uh, gluing steel together is a lot of fun and fabricating something that's unique is also that much more fun. So there we have it. So Pop was actually here when I was welding up the last four steps, but here we are just finishing up. And I just want to try putting the treads, tread thickness one and a half inch on the, the, the plates. Just see what it feels like. You know, it already felt good walking up the stairs. Um, you know, it looks industrial, modern, whatever. It'll look better when you have wall color and, uh, of course, treads on there, but it is what it is. Anyway, appreciate you guys watching. You see Pop walking down there. <laughs> no heart, no handrail. Anyway, thanks a lot.